uh, needs Wi-Fi access. Uh, it's the same PTC, um, uh, Hilton Hawaiian Village. And the, uh, the username is uh, uh, AP Telecom. It's uh, capital A, capital P, capital T, and then telecom, all one word. And then the password is Telecom 808, and the letter T in Telecom 808 is capitalized. So if anybody needs Wi-Fi access while we're sitting here, uh, feel free to use that. Um, as I mentioned, we're just gonna a couple housekeeping things. We understand a lot of folks uh, have other meetings uh, scheduled and planned, so if you have to leave, uh, no, uh, no offense taken. Um, the uh, presentation from this morning is gonna be uh, available as well as the two video streams uh, on statusupt.com and on the AP Telecom YouTube feed. So that, that'll be available uh, for everybody to watch if you can't stay for the whole duration of the program, it's not a problem. Uh, feel free to check it out. It'll be up uh, probably uh, within 24 hours. Uh, the team just needs time to, uh, to upload it after the event. Uh, everyone has on their, uh, their, their seat in front of them the uh, brochure. If uh, you just guys could open it up uh, and look inside. For folks that are carriers or content players or, or anything that sort, uh, that actually have capacity needs uh, from the South Atlantic cable, SACs from Angola to, uh, to Brazil, from Africa to South America, uh, as well as from Brazil to Florida, there's a section to put in uh, from a demand forecast. Uh, so uh, again, if your demand is zero, feel free to put in zero. If your demand is 10 gig or 100 gig or in between or more, uh, put that in because then we can follow up and talk to you guys. Uh, the, the whole concept of the DGM is a little bit retro. It's um, uh, something that was done in the 1990s and uh, many, many IRUs ago. Um, but the, uh, uh, the purpose is not for us to get up and really uh, have a one-way conversation. The purpose is to have a uh, bilateral discussion in, in a larger setting. So the, the feedback form in front of you is really important. And in order to um, get that information from all the attendees in the room, uh, and again, thank you for coming. Uh, we've made a uh, lucky draw uh, donation, and uh, that's why PCCW has about seven people here because these guys want to win the lucky draw. They, they, they won the last one. Uh, I think Joseph did. Um, so Joseph's uh, hoping to continue his winning streak, but I think uh, I don't know. Maybe Tata could win this year, but we'll see. We'll see how things go. Uh, but in, in order to uh, to win the lucky draw. Uh, you do have to fill in the, the DGM form, even if it says zero. Um, and your business cards, if you haven't given already, Megan, if you could just raise your hand, um, Megan will make sure that uh, at the end of the program, uh, we pick uh, the two winners out. It's uh, a $500 gift certificate at uh, the Hilton Properties anywhere in the world, uh, donated by AP Telecom. Um, so that's, uh, that's it on the, uh, the housekeeping. The video is going to be up, um, as well as the presentation, a uh, little bit on the, uh, the DGM forms that uh, we'll be collecting uh, towards the tail end of the presentation this morning. Uh, and uh, just to make sure that um, everybody uh, uh, that needs Wi-Fi is available. And again, the password is Telecom 808 with a capital T, and the username is AP Telecom, capital A, capital P, capital T. So that, that takes care of some of the housekeeping stuff. And if anybody does have a phone, which I'm sure everybody does, you can just make sure it's on mute uh, so it doesn't uh, disrupt. And that includes the speakers, uh, Arthur. Um, <laughs> during our dry run yesterday, it went off. So just want to make sure that uh, his phone is uh, on mute mode as well. So uh, I believe that covers all the admin uh, items that we wanted to just uh, take care of before we kicked off this morning. Uh, a couple of folks that we just wanted to uh, recognize and thank, uh, first being uh, Ocean Specialist, uh, Tom Soja, and uh, his team. Uh, they've been the uh, lead project for uh, just over three and a half years for Angola Cables uh, going uh, uh, on a global basis. Uh, and uh, we're obviously a very grateful for the relationship with Tom, with uh, Ocean Specialist. Tom's there in the back for anybody that likes to, to speak with Tom after the event. We have this room until uh, approximately 9.15, so feel free if you have any questions that you don't want to ask in an open setting to ask on a sidebar setting of uh, one-on-one -on -one, uh, offline. i also like to thank um, AP Telecom's Public Relations Agency, uh, the North Six Agency uh, in the city of New York, um, Tribeca, um, actually Soho now since they moved um, to the new office. Uh, we started this uh, uh, planning and preparation in October of 2014 uh, and the, the team really uh, rolled up their sleeves and, and has managed to, um, uh, to drive a fairly good event. 
Uh, we did a prior event in 2011, uh, in 2012, uh, in 2013. So this is becoming an annual tradition. It's a way to uh, to get uh, all the folks connected in a fairly short manner, and, and North Six has done a great job at this event. So thank you, Matt, Megan, and Nick. Uh, last, uh, uh, lastly, I uh, wanted to just uh, acknowledge uh, two folks from the Angola Cables team that are in the room. First is uh, Angola Cables board member, uh, Pedro. Pedro, if you could raise your hand. Uh, I've had the pleasure of uh, spending time with uh, Pedro in Angola, in Luanda, in West Africa, uh, as well as in uh, New York and here in Hawaii. And uh, uh, his commitment and his vision to Angola's growth uh, to really change the next 25, 30 years on the African continent is uh, quite sincere. A uh, man of mission and vision, uh, he's really uh, looking to grow Angola Cables as an uh, IT hub. Uh, and I think uh, they have an impressive story and vision that they're trying to explain to, to the world. And hopefully today we'll be able to share a little bit more. Uh, also, Ariette uh, is here uh, from Angola Cables, a uh, commercial manager. And, uh, is, uh, uh, this is her second PTC, I believe. Uh, second time to Hawaii. Uh, a little bit jet lagged because the flight from uh, Angola is about 35 hours. That seems like it. But uh, uh, it's, it's all good and we're, we're great to have, uh, yeah, glad to have you here. Right? So, without uh, further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce our first speaker that's going to present the uh, overview of uh, Angola Cables. Uh, Mr. Arthur Mendez, the Chief Commercial Officer of Angola Cables. Arthur has uh, got a illustrious background with uh, Nokia in Europe, the Middle East and Africa, and uh, we've had a chance uh, to work with Arthur over the last uh, two and a half years. Uh, uh, consider him a very good friend and industry colleague. Uh, pleasure working with him, and if you could give him a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Eric, for your nice words. Thank you all for coming and being present with us. Uh, in, in fact, I will only present a few slides because we would like to pass you some more technical information. And for that, I'm not, not the, the best person to, to do it. But, uh, but we, we thank you again for your presence and uh, you could feel well with us. I'll just, just speak uh, a bit uh, about uh, Angola Cables, a uh, uh, small overview. So Angola Cables have been created in 2009 by the five uh, main uh, Angolan operators uh, that, that, that you can see in the slides. So Angola Telecom, that is the incumbent operator. We have two mobile operators, Unitel and Movicel. Uh, MS Telecom, that is the telecommunication arm of the oil company of Angola. And also Startel, that is also a fixed operator. So, was uh, joining this, all, all the, the, the needs of these uh, operators, plus the, the division of, of, um, of the government strategy uh, to try to, to make it a company that, that could really transform Angola into uh, one of the main telecommunications apps in Africa, and really to try to develop uh, the telecommunication sectors in Angola and in Africa, and be able then to, uh, to uh, have good interconnections between uh, Africa and the rest of the world. Uh, Africa is, is, is a region that is growing at a very healthy place where uh, a lot of things still needs to be done. So uh, we really would like to, to help and to, to, to have a key role on, that, on that, that development of Africa. Speaking a bit uh, about Angola, Angola has an estimated population of 24 million, uh, but 60% are under 30%. So it's, it's a very young uh, nation. Uh, and normally, I say this is very positive because, of course, uh, young people normally are uh, early adopters of uh, new technologies, and, and we could see that Angola is taking, is taking, out, uh, taking uh, also a good development on this side, but there's still a lot to be done. When, when we started to, to see some, some of the numbers, of course, in terms, sorry, in terms of internet penetration, I'm sorry, in terms of internet penetration, the rate is still below 20%. We are still uh, a little above the, the average of Africa. Africa is at 19.3 at this stage, uh, so Angola well, is, is still still below that. Uh, on mobile phones, we are quite aligned with, with the rest of Africa, that is normally uh, still uh, below 60%. Uh, and just, just for curiosity, if we look for Facebook, that normally people now compare as uh, one of the big nations, if we put on to all the Facebook users, uh, we are still below 10%. So there's uh, plenty of space uh, to, to, to grow in, in Angola, as in Africa, as a, an overall 
But the truth is that uh, Africa is, is jumping some of the steps. So Angola has been the first country in Africa to have a 4G uh, networks. So uh, the country is very well covered with 3G and 4G networks. Fiber uh, has been developed in the country. Every we have more than 20,000 kilometers of fiber already in the country. So uh, the, the in, terms, in terms of technology, uh, the country is, is working uh, and evolving very well. In terms of the big projects that we'd like to, to present it here, and, and Joel and David we will present it. Uh, so uh, just to give you, so we'll speak about Saxon Monet. I just would like to clarify, because even on the sheets, we have still Kota. Uh, Kota was the name uh, that Angola Cables used before for Monet. Monet was a confidential uh, name uh, for the project, so we cannot use it. So uh, as, as a marketing in Angola, we normally call it uh, Cable of the Americas. That's why uh, some, sometimes we'll start still seeing Kota because it was the old name. Now only uh, it's a public name, we could announce it and we could use it, so we'll, we'll, we, are, we are using it already. Uh, and well, also we have uh, Wax Cable, that is this one that, that appears uh, from UK down to South Africa, touching three European countries, that is UK, Ireland and, and Portugal, and of 11, 11 countries. These have been uh, the, the one that we have been selling so far, and, and we are proud to say that we are the second uh, operator with most capacity activated here, so there is only NTN in uh, front of us, that is uh, it's a good achievement for us. But of course the, the main project that, that, that we are now uh, speaking is about SACS connecting Angola to Fortaleza in Brazil. Uh, this is 100% Angola Cables project. Uh, uh, and you hear more about it, and, and money uh, from Santos to Fortaleza and up to Miami, and this is a consortium, uh, and you, you hear uh, more, more about it. Okay? So. status. Um, Joel has been the Monet lead for Angola Cables for uh, over the past two years and working on uh, all aspects of uh, contract formation, technical definition, and negotiation. Uh, Joel's going to be continuing his role as the lead project uh, implementator for the Angola Cables system. Uh, he was recently elected joint chair of the purchaser group by the Monet uh, system, where he will represent the interests of all purchasers for the Monet system implementation. So, Joel. Okay, thank you, Eric. Uh, thank you, thank you, Arthur. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for coming this early. It's good to see a number of familiar faces in the room. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Joel Penning, as, as Eric has said, um, and I've been working uh, with Angular Cables for more than two years now on the Monet project. Um, so, as a bit of uh, background, before we get into the details, the you know, some people, might, some people might ask why it's taken two years. So there's a number of things that have happened so far. There's been uh, a drive also to find partners to come in uh, on the system with us, and that's not an easy task, um, as well as finding the partners. And once we've found the partners, we've had to draw up a contract to find the technical definitions of the system, um, specifications, and lastly but not leastly, uh, agree a joint build agreement. So the, the, define the relationship between the uh, purchasers. So that's the last two years in a nutshell. So um, it's good to be standing here now with a, with a story to tell. Um, so you know, we've come a long way already. We've got a way to go still, another couple of years. But uh, it's, it's good to be here with, a, you know, with, a, with something something happening. So what is Monet then? So Monet is obviously a new system from Florida down to Brazil. You can see it there on the, on the map down the east coast of Brazil. Oops, sorry, wrong button. It's 
It's got three landing points, Boca Raton in the north, Fortaleza, and Santos stroke Sao Paulo in, in Brazil. It's a trunk, trunk branch system, so it has a 10,500 kilometer trunk with a branch unit of Fortaleza for, uh, for fiber drops and wavelength drops. Uh, it's a six fiber pair system on the trunk. Um, and and yeah, as I said, it's a, it's, it's a wavelength or a, and a fiber drop branch unit. So in summary, it's a turnkey supply from Subcom. There are four money purchases involved, and that changed over the previous two years. There was a lot of toing and froing, and we, we went in with different partners who couldn't, couldn't make it in the end, and, and this is the four that, that managed to get to the, to the finish line. So it's obviously Angola Cables, we also have Google, we have Algar Telecom, which is a big telecoms company in Brazil, and we have Antal in Uruguay, which is the state operator. The system is set up so that Angola Cables owns the dedicated fiber pairs in the system, as do all the other three. So there are six fiber pairs, as I said. Angola Cables will own two, Google will own two, and each of the others will have one fiber pair each. So this is a, just a summary overview of the fiber pair configuration for Angola Cables. As you can see, Boca Raton, Fortaleza, Santos, there's a single fiber pair with fiber, fiber drops into Fortaleza via the branch unit and a second fiber pair with uh, express capability and wavelength drop capability um, for, for customers that want an express or, or uh, to, to expand our drop capability if we need it. So the total capacity of the system um, it's 120 by 100 gig on the drop fiber pairs and 100 gig, 100 by 100 gig on the express. As I said before, 10,500 kilometer trunk. This is the last slide. So it's just a, a summary status of where we are. So as I said before, we have a joint build agreement between the money purchases signed and in place. The supply contract with Subcom was signed on the 9th of August last year, and it came into force on the 8th of October last year. So we're already three months into the project. Full funding is in place, all purchases paid, and are finally committed. So there's no going back from here. So in terms of the work that started, the marine survey has started, it's underway, permit applications are underway, manufacturing process has commenced, um, and the, uh, just, just for information, really, the marine installation program is, is the middle of next year with an RF, RFS date for the end of 2016. So if anyone has any questions, they can ask me them now or we can tie up afterwards. I'll be kind of around after the meeting. But um, is there any questions at the moment? Yeah, thank you. Uh, the landing party in Boca, is that uh, It is. So the, the landing party in, in Boca will be Google. In Fortaleza will be Angola Cables, and in Santos will be Google. Okay, uh, and so you're building a new cable landing station in Boca? We're, we're building uh, a new cable landing station in Fortaleza and Santos. Uh, I'm not sure yet what Google are going to do. We have an option to build one, but we also have an option to go into existing facilities, which is the preferred solution. Thank you. What is the construction cost of uh, money? Construction costs? I don't know, I don't believe I'm allowed to disclose the construction costs. Okay, so that's it for me on one I'll pass you back to Eric briefly. Thank you, Joel, for that comprehensive uh, overview of the uh, Brazil, Florida money mm -hmm. system. Uh, I think the key point uh, that Joel certainly made was that the full funding is in place. There, there's been a lot of deal fatigue, a lot of fatigue about systems that are talked about that don't come to fruition and that don't materialize. Um, this is not one of them. They're going ahead. So uh, if there's any key takeaway or message that we want to make sure that everyone leaves with today is that the system is going ahead. Okay, uh, I'd like to uh, call up to the podium uh, for the next uh, 
part of the uh, DGM presentation. Uh, the South Atlantic portion, uh, the SAC system, the 